Howdy everyone, first I gotta give you a caution here. We are going to be building a gas tank. These things are potentially dangerous. If you don't do it right, you can have an explosion, a fire. That is bad news, very bad news. I don't want you to get hurt. So, if you've never done anything like this before, get someone who's mechanically inclined to help you, and get someone who is experienced, knowledgeable about safety, who will test your gas tank for you and give you a thumbs up. I recommend you build you a tank or two and beat it up, destroy it, do some destructive testing to make sure that your tank is going to hold gas. Don't just do this and hope it works out. Test it, test it, test it. Be careful. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I built this gas tank here. I uh, started with a uh, flat piece of 22 gauge steel. I soft soldered it together, then I sealed it with a uh, Caswell uh, two-part epoxy sealer. Uh, the advantage of using soft solder over brazing or welding is you get much less distortion because you're not getting it as hot. I've had some issues before making gas tanks I've, I've brazed. The brazing holds together very well, but uh, it's uh, the heat winds up warping it, and uh, I'm not pleased with the uh, the final shape. I'm building a, uh, a motorized bike here with the Wizard motor on it here. This gas tank is going to mount here. I have two tabs on the front, two on the back. Here, where I'm going to be welding plates onto the frame that's going to hold the uh, the gas tank in position and then as well we're going to have a, a shroud over the gas tank so this is going to be uh, be concealed I'm going to have electrics here but uh, pay attention I'll show you how I do it I don't know if I'll uh, teach you anything I'm not a master yet at uh, soft soldering you'll see in the video I uh, tended to get it uh, a little bit too hot so with the uh, the soft solder I learned uh, you don't want to get it extremely hot. You want to back down on your flame a little bit. Uh, if you get it too hot, the solder, like it turns to water, it just liquefies and doesn't really go where you want it to go. You want it nice and slow and controlled. As I learned, uh, as I've been learning doing a soft soldering, however, I've done some destructive testing. The soft soldering is uh, plenty strong to hold it. Um, if you're going to get something that's going to get a good hit on it, or if you're, you know, you're going to have your gas tank exposed. On a bike, I might uh, suggest you at least braze on your fitting to your uh, your, your tab, your mounting to your uh, gas tank. That way, uh, you've you've got uh, pretty good structural integrity or shield it somehow. But uh, if you have a, a tank that's uh, not going to get some good hits or whatever, uh, soft soldering is going to work. You seal it with the uh, the Caswell epoxy sealer, and uh, you should be good to go. So pay attention. Okay, boys and girls, here we go here. We're going to make us a gas tank here. I've got some 22 gauge steel. It's not coated. You don't want to use galvanized. Uh, the, uh, the galvanized uh, coating on it will react with gasoline, give you some problems. We're going to use uh, OD number no. 5 uh, solder paste uh, flux. And we're going to use this some 50-50 solder. Plus, we're going to seal it with a Caswell gas tank sealer. So I'm not worried about this gas tank leaking. Um, it, it's going to go into a uh, motorized bicycle. Let's get going. I'm going to show you how we do it. Okay, now that I've got some rough edges here where I've cut it, 
You can either file it or get out your, uh, your polishing disc. Okay, our first bend is going to be along this line here, then this one, then this one, and then I can pull it out of my brake here. There you go, I got me a 90 here. Better than a 90 there. There you go, boys and girls. Okay, so what I've got to do, I've got to put me a bend here. I've got to work on this bend a little bit here. I'm going to bring these in. Here, these are going to wrap around. I'm going to sand it here, here, and here, and get the, get the metal ready. And then I'm going to sand it down here, or I'm going to use this. Okay, getting a good joint on this depends upon getting the, the soldering paste, the flux in there.
What you've got to do is get the, the paste flux hot enough for it to activate. Then you want to get your, uh, your soft solder in. And I have a pretty good seam there. Okay, I went back through the tank here. I uh, touched all the seams up here. Double checked it. I tested it. We don't have any leaks. We're pretty much good to go. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking some uh, denatured alcohol, poured it in there, give it a good shake, make sure the alcohol, the denatured alcohol gets in the areas where your seams are, slosh it about a good bit, still keep checking for leaks here, you, you, you could have some still and uh, be okay as long as they're real small because don't forget we're going to use the Caswell uh, tank sealer on it. After I dump the denatured alcohol I'm going to put some acetone in there. As you can tell I've got a piece of uh, a lump of salt. Okay here we go I got the tank cleaned out real good cleaned it with the uh, denatured alcohol, then I hit it with some uh, acetone. I mixed up my Caswell, the Dragon's Blood sealer. It's two parts to one part. They say only mix up half a can at a time. You know what, I'm cheap. I'm only doing it a third of a can. Really, this is too much for this here. I'm probably gonna wind up uh, wasting some of it here. And they say mix it real good. I've done that. They say mix it for two minutes. I mixed it a little bit longer. It takes this stuff a little while to get going. Here it's it's fairly thin. It'll thicken up here in, uh, in, in good enough time here. I'm going to cover up the threads. So I don't want to get anything on the threads. And this stuff is as mixed up as it is ever going to get. The, uh, the Caswell, the, uh, the, the one that you mix two parts of, is uh, a clear product and uh, it, it's all homogenous. The red here, what they're calling the, uh, the part B, uh, that had uh, kind of separated so I mixed it up real good. And we're beyond the working time here, but I'm not too concerned about it. I've played with this stuff before. Go ahead and pour it on in the tank. I have the petcock bung sealed up so the uh, epoxy sealer will, uh, won't go out of it. And then I'm just going to stuff this shopping bag inside of it and all is left for me to do is just to turn it and I want to be sure and get the epoxy sealer to coat all of the seams as of this point here I don't recommend you do any more grinding soldering welding brazing anything like that on the tank because the heat will affect the epoxy and as well since it's flammable you could have some problems I want to try to work it around the uh, the petcock bung here. I'm not too worried about it getting clogged in there. I've got it plugged and as well towards the end I'll pull this out and I'll push something through there to make good and sure that I've got it plugged up. Okay I've been turning it for a while. I've got some of the leftover epoxy sealer here in a plastic cup and it's getting pretty thick. I'm just going to pour the last bit of it into the tank. Alright, this is as good as it gets. We're going to let it sit for 24 hours. 
So if you like it, give me a thumbs up, click subscribe, more to come.